right. I'm with Kalia Cobra. So headline of this article of the Chicago Sun-Times. Kalia Copper believes the 2022 Sky roster hasn't seen their last days playing together. She said, I don't care if people come back and sign a one-year deal, Copper said. There's no way we can just be done. And uh, we go into the article a little more. I must say this ahead of time. I just don't think you go for the devil that you don't know. Like, Candace don't know the new dynamics of what's going on with the Sparks. Kurt Miller still has to come in and, and you know, introduce what he wants to. It's just, it's some pieces that ha- have to be set in stone before I think people start to view them as a legit contender. She's on the back end of her career. She don't have time for pieces to start to be built. They already have a solid foundation in Chicago. And I'm not saying you can't just go right in and win. I'm just saying when you're comparing the two situations, the foundation in Chicago is more sturdy. I think at least for one year, everybody will come back for the situation that they know because most people feel like they shouldn't have lost to the sun. If they lost in the finals, I 100% that she probably would be open to going to L.A. But I think she not just going to go out on the hometown team with how they went out. It didn't happen in the, in the finals, so I just can't see it. But let's see what Copper thinks. Most people have heard the stories of Courtney Vandersloot and Allie Quigley sending Chicago's finest delicacies to Candace Parker in an effort to woo her during WNBA free agency in 2021. As the sky's longest tenure players and the faces of the franchise, the backcard duo poured out all stops to entice WNBA's top free agent into joining them in Chicago. By the time the 2023 season rolls around, it will be Kalia Copper sharing stories of the effort it took to persuade the WNBA's best to consider the sky as a landing spot. Copper won't just be tasked with helping sky coach General Manager James Wade resign Parker. She's gearing up for an assistant GM role of all sorts that will have her trying to help bring back Vandersloot and Quigley too. As a matter of fact, she's trying to bring back the entire 2022 Sky roster if she can. As you heard earlier, she don't care if people come back and sign just one year. Just, you know, let's try it one more time because I don't think they was all the way locked in for the full season. I think it's another level that they can turn in, turn on from the start that wasn't there last season that might be there because of how they went out. Copper sentiment is rooted in how the Sky season ended in complete and other, utter disappointment. The Sky had all the pieces to become the first team to win back-to-back WNBA titles in 20 years. Talent, depth, experience, but instead were eliminated by the Sun in Game 5 of the semifinals. It was a game that left a bitter taste in the mouths of the Sky's players. After the Sky's 2021 championship, Parker took some time to relax, partaking in what she describes as citizen workouts such as Pilates, hiking, and yoga. But six days after the Sky was eliminated by the sun, she was back in the gym. When the WNBA shared a recap video of the Sky's season this week on social media, Parker reshared it and expressed discontent with how it ended. Candace is the ultimate competitor, Copper said. So from last season, there was no way she could be done. It's important for me, with her being my big sis, my best friend, that I protect her legacy. If she comes back to Chicago, I'm all in to do whatever it takes for her to win another championship. What it takes might require a refreshed war- roster. Quigley has contemplated retirement, saying she would spend time with family this all season before deciding about whether to return to the WNBA. Defensively, Quigley made significant improvements that were evident during the Sky's playoff run. Offensively, her production dipped. During the Sky's playoff run in 2021, Quigley averaged 15.2 points and shot 41.7 from the field, including 36.5 from three-point range. Last season, she averaged 9.6 points on 33.8 shooting from the field and 31.9 from three-point range in, in the postseason. In fact, Parker was the only member of the Sky's 2021 starting five whose playoff production improved in 2022. 
she averaged a playoff double double with 14.8 points and 10.8 rebounds. Wade has maintained he doesn't want to see Vandersloot and Quigley play for any other team, but it might be out of his control. Not only is Quigley contemplating retirement, but Vandersloot will be getting plenty of free agent interest and again has said she will entertain it all. If Quigley, now I think I wouldn't be surprised as Stewie and like I know some people think that Sloot going to uh, Seattle. But I wouldn't be surprised if she went where wherever it's through. I don't know. I don't know. It might. She, I can see it. If Quigley opts to return for another season and chooses to resign with the Sky, the team must consider a new role for her. Her experience makes her an asset on any roster, and her ability has, as a knockdown shooter from three-point range, despite her dip in production from 2021 to 2022, is still lethal enough to keep defenses honest. But that isn't necessarily enough to warrant the starting role she had last year, especially with the rise of Rebecca Gardner. Wade told sometimes last season that Gardner will be back with the Sky 2023. She is a reserve free agent, meaning she only can negotiate with the Sky unless she's released. Beyond the Sky's big three of Parker, Vandersloot, and Quigley, Azura Stevens and Emma Mieseman also will be unrestricted free agents and hit the market in January. Copper already has her eyes on the entire pool of available free agents and has big plans to assist Wade in signing a championship contender roster. Still, contingency plans are a must, especially for their big three. What if somehow they can get Rihanna Stewart? Because they have the depth that Stewie would want around her. They have the experience that she would want around her. They've won before. Chicago on the East Coast, too. I just, I don't see New York, man. I just don't. I, I, I understand that's where she's from, but I just don't know why you would go to New York. I just don't see see her winning a championship in New York. I just don't see it. Like, if Sabrina was what she was advertised coming into school, all right. But, I mean, coming into the league and, and coming out of college, it would make sense. I just think it's better places. Not to say it's a horrible decision and not to say that she isn't great enough to elevate everybody around her, but I'm just saying why not put yourself in the best position to win a championship and really compete with the aces so i mean you they was doing that last year but i'm saying on a new roster we understand that super retiring and she pretty i don't know it seemed like a done conclusion with her getting out of there so if you're gonna get out of seattle why not go to the place that maximizes your potential that's still on the east coast and you know i might have another uh might have another place in mind too so y'all let me know what y'all think I'm